So at 1 a.m. in the morning, while everybody else was sleeping, the team started the first heart transplant. It started at 1 a.m. and it took four hours and 58 minutes for us to take the heart out of Denise's chest, get it into Wyshkansky's chest, and get it beating perfectly. So at exactly two minutes to six, on the 3rd of December, when Louis Wyshkansky's new donor heart started beating, that was when South Africa had just made world history by doing the first successful human heart transplant. Chris Barnard trained on dogs because he had been in America and the Americans used to use dogs. But he had to follow some kind of law. So when he was in America, he was following American law. Now the American law said, if you wanted to take organs from a donor, two things had to happen to the donor before you touch the donor. One, the donor had to be pronounced dead by two qualified doctors. And the second thing that had to happen is the donor's brain and heart had to totally stop first. Only then could you open the donor up and take what you need from the donor. Now you see, that was how the Americans defined death. They said when both of these stopping, that means you're dead. But as I've just told you, the heart, the minute it stops, it starts to go bad. So Chris Barnard went to America and he was doing it like the Americans. He worked with Americans for three years on dogs in the laboratories. And then he came back to South Africa and he carried on working with dogs and carried on doing it like the Americans. But he was not getting much success because every time he waited for the dog's heart to stop, then he cut the dog open and got to the heart, the heart was partially damaged. And he would take this damaged heart, do a transplant, it would be unsuccessful. So he was getting annoyed and he thought there's got to be a better way to do this. Now at that time he was following American law. So he decided to stop following American law and he looked at South African law instead. And while he was reading our law, he found a way to get around the law. You see, when South African law was talking about donors, this is what our law said. Our law said if you want to take organs from a donor, the donor must be pronounced dead by two qualified doctors. Full stop. That was our law. Our law didn't say the brain and the heart had to stop. And our law didn't say how the doctors had to certify the donor dead. So suddenly, Chris Barnard realized he could use a brain-dead donor. Now, a person that is brain-dead, we call that person clinically dead, even though their bodies are still working, even though their heart's still beating, even though they're taking in oxygen. They actually are clinically dead already. Because if you don't have a brain, you can't see, you can't feel, you can't touch, you can't taste, you can't talk, you can't hear. Nothing is working except your body out of habits. And then eventually your body will stop as well. So Chris Barnard discovered if he took a brain dead person as the donor, once their brain was gone, he could open their chest while the heart was beating. He could stop the heart and immediately take it out. So his hearts were never damaged. And that's how Chris Barnard got to beat the American. The American doctors then went <coughs> ballistic and they started attacking Chris Barnard. They called Chris Barnard unethical. They said he was immoral. They said he shouldn't be touching a beating human heart. But Chris Barnard was minchapla about the Americans. And one month later, 2nd of January 1968, just to prove a point, bam, he did it again. Now, when Chris Barnard started preparing for his first heart transplant, his first part of preparation was to decide who to give the first heart to. Now, he chose a dying man called Louis Vyshkansky. He was 53 years old. Heart was failing, kidneys were failing, doctors couldn't help him anymore. So Chris Barnard went to him and told him about the transplant, told him he could do it, but he also said to him, it's going to be dangerous. This is the first time I'm doing the operation. You could die while I'm busy operating on you. Louis Wyshkansky's answer, he said, hey, I'm going to die anyway. I'll take my chance with you. So he became our first recipient. When we got, once we got him sorted out, then, we, then he then had to find a suitable donor. And then on the 2nd of December, 1967, a young 25-year-old girl called Denise Darville. She comes into the casualty. Now, what happened was her and her family were driving along in her car, not far from the hospital, on the main road. They had stopped to buy a cake. When they stopped the car, her and her mom got out the car. They ran across to the, the um, bakery, went inside, bought the cake. But as they were coming out, trying to cross the road to get back to their parked car, a car from the opposite di direction came down and hit the two women. Yeah. Now, it hit the mother so hard that it killed her on impact. Now, on impact, that meant her brain and her heart stopped. So we couldn't use her as a donor. But as it hit Denise, the young girl, she was light. So she got flung up into the air. She flew quite a distance and then, bam, she landed on her head. So she had massive damage done to her. She also had massive damage done to her pelvis where the car had hit her. So she was brought in by ambulance. Um, she was eventually declared brain dead. And then once we realized that she was uh, brain dead, the next thing we had to do was start matching her up to see if she was compatible with Louis Wyshkansky. 
Now, when you're doing a transplant, you don't give anybody's organs to anybody. You have to match some stuff up. The first thing you match up is the blood type. The second thing you match up is the tissue type. Now, tissue type is difficult to explain, but it's like the meaty part where your DNA sits. And the third thing they had to match up was the size. Now, the first and the second thing, the blood and the tissue type match, but she was a woman, so her heart was much smaller. smaller. In fact, it was too small for Louis Wyszkanski. He was quite a big guy. But Chris Barnard said to the, his team, you know what, we're running out of time. Louis Wyszkanski is going to die if we don't do this transplant. Let's just go ahead and use the smaller woman's heart. So the, once they knew that they were going to use her heart, they then had to ask her dad for permission. But this father was amazing. He said yes. And the minute he gave us the permission, then we brought Denise up to these operating rooms. We brought Wyszkanski over from the wards. Now, this accident all happened on the 2nd of December. But by the time we got the permission, signed the papers, and we were ready to start the transplant, it had gone into the 3rd of December. So at 1 a.m. in the morning, team started the first heart transplant. It started at 1 a.m. and it took four hours and 58 minutes for us to take the heart out of Denise's chest, get it into Wyszkanski's chest, and get it beating perfectly. So in exactly two minutes to six, on the 3rd of December, when Louis Wyszkanski's new donor heart started beating, that was when South Africa had just made world history by doing the first successful human heart transplant.